peace, tranquility, harmony. Words that have become almost a mere myth. Here's some more words. Pain, tragedy, victim, casualty. Words that have become a part of everyday life. Victims become mere statistics in a world of unrest, and it all boils down to one word, selfishness. Growing up, we're taught to think before we act, but it's a saying that many people neglect. And neglecting this saying often ends up in a situation like this next story. May 31st, 2008, the world would make way for Micaiah Wilson. She would be brought into this world by her parents, Michael and Donetta Wilson, where she would have her upbringing in Washington, D.C., where she would attend D.C. public schools as well as D.C. public charter schools. She's described as someone with a colorful personality, someone who would brighten up a stranger's day. Outside of dancing and listening to rap music, one of her hobbies was doing puzzles. Even at a young age, she was willing to challenge her mind. She was a thoughtful person. Whenever there was a community get together where someone was giving back to the community, Micaiah wanted to be right there, smiling at the people, just letting everyone know that things were gonna be okay. But outside of being a beautiful young child, she enjoyed sports, a lot. In the year of 2018, Micaiah Wilson would be 10 years old and just leaving fourth grade. The next year, she planned to join the basketball team at DC Scholars Public Charter School. But for her, this was more than just an extracurricular activity. This was what she wanted to be in life. She wanted to be an athlete. She was a driven young girl who was ready to take on the world. July 16th, 2018. It was a normal day in the 300 block of 53rd Street. Micaiah was at her home in Clay Terrace. She was there with her mother, her sister, as well as a small crowd that was sitting outside in the apartment complex. It's a small crowd of about 15 people. Now, in Clay Terrace, this was a normal thing. People were just hanging out. July 16th would be a hot summer day. Her and her sister would be hanging out all day. Makai Wilson and her sister would be sitting on the porch eating sunflower seeds and pickled eggs. But then they heard the ice cream truck. So Makai Wilson, like any other child, wanted to go get ice cream. So she leaves the porch and she heads towards the ice cream truck. But when she leaves, a tragic event would occur. A black infinity would pull up on the premises and masked men would hop out of the car. These masked men would then proceed to let off a barrage of shots. During this incident, Micaiah's older sister would be injured, as well as Micaiah, along with three other adults. The men would then get back into the car and speed off, leaving behind them a trail of tears and agony. The four adults who were injured in this incident would be taken to the hospital and treated for their injuries, and they would survive. However, 10-year-old Micaiah Wilson wouldn't be so fortunate, and she would fall victim to these circumstances. After this incident, the community would be immediately placed on high alert. The entire city would be mourning the death of Micaiah Wilson, but at this point, there's no answers as to who the masked men were or why this incident occurred. The police would get to work and they would immediately begin canvassing the area. They would begin knocking on doors, talking to any and everyone who may have seen something. The police would receive leads in this investigation because after all, that area is terrorized by gang activity. And that was the number one culprit at the time. However, in the area alone, there were several gangs, so distinguishing which gangs were involved in this shooting was going to be hard for them. The police would hit several blocks because although while people were willing to testify that this gang or that gang may have been involved, none of them were willing to name people, at least openly, out of fear of retaliation. 
So at this point, all the family could do was turn to the public and plead for people to come forward with answers. It's been 48 hours since 10-year-old Micaiah Wilson was gunned down, an innocent victim of gun violence on the streets of D.C. Tonight, some of the people who live in her northeast neighborhood are calling out city leaders for not doing enough. Fox 5's Melissa Howell has been trying to get a response from the mayor. She's live at the Wilson Building tonight with the latest. Melissa? Sean, you know it has been a very hard week for people in the Terrace Clay community where 10-year-old Micaiah lived with her family. And tonight, many of them are expressing a deep frustration with how the mayor's office has handled this tragedy as well as gun violence in the inner city. It's just hurt me so bad. Like, it hurt me because my baby can't live and see her life. She wanna. She want to do stuff. Yeah. Yesterday, Micaiah Wilson's mom expressed her pain following the loss of her 10-year-old daughter, who was playing just outside her home Monday when she was shot after four men opened fire on a crowd. Today, members in the community here describe Mayor Muriel Bowser and D.C. Police Chief Peter Newsham's response as passive and lethargic. Proof! Out of all the shots that were done, one killed her. They didn't even hit their target. I'm, I'm mad. I'm extremely angry, and I don't know really, like, even though I'm mad, I don't really know how to feel. It's like something no. in my mind telling no. me, no, it's not real. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then something is telling me, if it's real, then why? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And then she suffered. She knew it was coming when she was saying, Mommy, help me. Mm -hmm. Then it burned. Sonetta, just to be clear, do you think that these men were out for your 18-year-old daughter? No, 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 no. 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 Let's make let's make that clear. We don't know. We don't know. All we know is that she she's not here. My 18-year-old never be into no crime. She go to work every day. She go to school. She don't hang out and do no type of stuff like that for nobody to be looking for her to do something like that. Who do you I think don't they know were at all. I don't know. I don't have a clue. The family has now pleaded with the authorities to put more pressure on this case pleaded with the authorities to find the actual culprit, but it would take time. But in the meantime, the family would be forced to bury their daughter without any answers. On July 25th of 2018, Micaiah Wilson would be laid to rest, and it would only strengthen the fight for justice. We really trying to hold strong because this is like, this is a hard thing for us because that was my little cousin. She, she meant a lot to all of us. So for her, her to pass from that shooting and the violence is very sad. So we're trying to hold strong. We're trying to keep everything in. A funeral was held today for 10-year-old Micaiah Wilson, who was gunned down in her northeast neighborhood. Alongside the tears and tributes were promises to find the killers who are still on the run. Somebody in this room right now know who did it. And it's on us to hold them accountable because we know we play a part in the conspiracy that's going on in our community. Shortly after the shooting, the police would receive their first big lead. A tip would be called into the station in which someone had found the getaway car. And when the police arrive on the scene, they do in fact find the vehicle matching the description from the surveillance tape. Inside of the vehicle were found shell casings as well as fingerprints and DNA. This discovery would eventually lead them to their first arrest. On August 25th of 2018, the D.C. Superior Court arrest warrant would be issued for 20-year-old Kiwan Thomas, as well as an arrest warrant being issued for then 21-year-old Quentin Michaels. Along with these warrants being issued, police have now think that they have discovered the motive for what occurred. A year prior to the incident with Micaiah Wilson and the four other adults being injured, Quentin Michaels was shot in Clay Terrace. And the authorities believed that this was a direct retaliation for what occurred in that moment. Kiwan Thomas would swiftly be arrested and taken into custody. However, Quentin Michaels was still at large and the police would be forced to release his picture in hopes of finding him. Finding Quentin was looking like it was going to be hard. But then something else occurred. In September of 2018, Quentin Michaels would turn himself in. But although the police had two suspects in custody, neither of them were talking, at least not to the authorities. 
but unbeknownst to Kiwan and Quentin, their calls were being monitored while behind bars, and Kiwan Thomas would slip up. Kiwan Thomas would be caught in the act of discussing this incident while behind bars. During this conversation, Kiwan was trying to be slick and using code words, but there was one problem. While using these code words, he was naming actual suspects during this conversation, and this phone call would lead to the arrest of more suspects. And after two years of investigating this case, the police will have already arrested 11 suspects in connection to the murder of Micaiah Wilson. Shocking video of a horrifying crime, silent but heart-stopping. A police surveillance camera caught five men in a stolen infinity, opening fire on a crowd of people out on their front stoops on a warm July night. 20 seconds, 50 gunshots, four gunmen and a getaway driver. That evening, the court erupted in violence because of them, Prosecutor Lindsay Marika said, pointing at the six defendants crowded into separate tables. Police say the Wellington Park criminal gang shot up Clay Terrace in a long-running beef over drug turf and perceived slights. But prosecutors will have to prove the case against each individual defendant, Kujan Thomas, Quentin Michaels, Markel Cobbs, Derese Jeffers, Isaiah Murchison, and Gregory Taylor, all between 21 and 26 years old. With six defendants and all their lawyers, this case is moving at a crawl. The judges warned the jury that it could go on for three months. The story of Micaiah Wilson is tragic. It's heartbreaking. But I think the worst part about this situation is when it comes to the court case and the six defendants that are facing prosecution now, the evidence that is amounted against them is mostly circumstantial. The prosecution team has admitted themselves that they have their doubts because they have to prove that each individual was involved in this murder and that's going to be a hard thing to do. The reason why I chose to upload this story is to once again try and do my part to place it in the headlines because hearing the prosecution team admit that is just, man, it, it, it leaves me speechless. But as long as we keep some type of exposure on the case, it'll put more pressure for convictions. The trial for the six defendants being charged presently started in February of this year and it is currently going on. I will provide updates. At the end of the day, this was a senseless act. People hopping out of a car and randomly firing into a crowd is just, it's unbelievable. And I really hope that Micaiah receives the justice that she deserves. Rest in peace, Micaiah Lee Wilson. Thank you for being a light for others.